Welcome to another Let's Play of uh, The Walking Dead All Out War by Mantic Games. Uh, I'm playing through the first uh, expansion pack, Days Gone By, that tells the, the start of the, uh, of the story. I'm going to play Chapter 3, Campfire Tales, reunited with his family and... An old friend, Rick, thinks he may have found some respite from the horrors of the new world. But the fledgling group soon realizes that there's no rest from the threat of the walkers. Okay, so in this scenario, I've uh, set up a, uh, a forest board. Just need to see if I can get some. Come on. All right, so I've set up a uh, forest board right there. And for this scenario, Carol, Donna, uh, and Laurie are trapped in here, and there is a lot of walkers in the way for them. Rick and Shane, they're up here. The other side of the map, there are the good fighters. They have some gear. And over here in the camp, Alan, uh, what's he called? Jim and uh, Dale are able to support them. The mission in this scenario is for at least two of the characters from here, two of the female characters. To get to the uh, RV, and uh, when there's two of them up there at the RV, the scenario is one. If at any point I lose two survivors, then the game is over, and I've uh, I've lost. And if the threat tracker that starts on four ever reaches 18, the game is lost. Uh, so the ladies, they have uh, no gear at all. Then we have uh, Rick and Shane. Rick has a pistol, his hatches and some bandages. Rick starts wounded because the last scenario I played uh, in Atlanta, I lost. Uh, in the last round, Rick rolled badly uh, and he didn't make it out of the of the city. He got uh, so we got no bonus from supplies and he starts wounded. Uh, there's Shane with a baseball bat. Uh, Jim has a wrench. He's a mechanic. Alan with a hatchet. And uh, Dale got a gun. And I gave them gear before reading the rules for the scenario. So I have to, to remember that in this scenario... Uh, rookies, when performing ranged attacks, models from group B and Z, so that's Dale, uh, must discard one die from the ranged attack roll unless a model from group A is within their kill zone. So unless I can get uh, Rick and Shane close to the other guys, Dale really won't be very good with his pistol. We'll just have to uh, see how it, uh, how it goes. So, lots of characters to move around. Uh, the good thing about this is that there's a lot of characters that can use, I, I think, the plan for the, for the female characters uh, down here is to sneak, don't make any noise, and use an action each turn to try and lower the threat tracker so it don't go uh, completely uh, crazy. The way I've decided to, uh, to play through uh, this Walking Dead campaign is that I have so many uh, I have so many event parts for all the expansion packs so I won't be reshuffling uh, the deck between games when an event or a supply token is drawn and used it goes to the side and uh, I won't I won't shuffle the decks before I've gone through all of the event cards and all the supply cards because there are so many. All right, 
let's get it going. At the start of each activation phase, the threat tracker raises uh, by one, simply because I'm going solo. So it's uh, it's made harder. Let's start over here. There's supplies in all the tents, and there's supplies in the RV. So I think it's a good idea to start and try and just get some of those, uh, see if I can get something that helps me uh, in the upcoming fight. So I'm going to start with Alan. And Alan, take some supplies, and let's see uh, what we find here. Bandages. That will come in handy uh, when I get wounded. So that's his first action. And uh, for his uh, second action, he is just going to... Uh, I think he's going to run down here, draw in the... Yeah, perhaps I really shouldn't. No, he's not. He's just going to sne sneak a bit... No. Let's get it on. He's going to run down here and uh, draw in the first zombie. I need to get down there so I can hail uh, the ladies back to the camp. The quicker, the better. So that's his first turn. Uh, Jim is going to search the uh, second tent. Let's see what kind of supplies he found. An ammo dump. While carrying this item, the model and any friendly survivor in its kill zone automatically passes any armor roll it is required to take. So I should really get that to uh, to Dale at some point. And he's also just he's going to do fine in combat. Try and get in here and bash the skull of uh, of that zombie right there. He might do a run action, get some more distance and draw in the nearest one. Then there is uh, Dale. Dale is also going to start by uh, searching this tent close to him. Trash can lid. Add. One white to melee defense rolls against walkers. Nice. So a shield, basically, from a trash can. All right. Uh, his first action, his second action, he's going to um, he's going to sneak up here towards the uh, second tent. Now, I think uh, Donna. She's a support character. Uh, she's going to try and lower the threat level straight from the get-go. No, no success. And she's going to sneak up here. Next up is uh, Carol, recent, recent widow. <laughs> Her husband is Alan. He's not dead yet. Uh, a shield, so that lowers the uh, threat level. And she can sneak four inches up here. And last... Uh, Lori Grimes and she has success as well so lower the red tracker another one and this is going to be really important and she's going to sneak up there then there is uh, Rick Grimes leader ability Rick may perform this in place of a whole your nerves action roll and reduce the threat level uh, by that many points that's cool he can reduce the threat by a blue dice. That is going to be really, really important. Uh, but he's just going to start by running down here and drawing a. Uh, he better. Yeah, he's going to start out using his leader ability, lower it by two, and then he's going to run, draw in a walker. And he's ready for some combat. And Shane. Shane is just going to uh, run down here and draw in this walker. Might as well bash in some heads and uh, see if we can uh, see if we can clear a path to the to the lady. So that's the first one here. Event phase. Just going to check if there's any uh, one inside walker kill zones. No. So they're all home. They're all home free. Nobody uh, is inside the kill zones. Let's draw an event card and see what happens here. Forest walkers. All threat levels. What are the odds? Walkers shamble out of the trees. These walkers are placed using the rules for walkers entering play, but 
are played on the edge of an area of woods instead of the board edge. If there are no woods, blah, 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 blah. The number of walkers placed depends on threat level. All quiet, a red dime. Okay, let's see how many walkers enter play. Two. All right. Let's see. There's a lot of shine. I'm just going to turn this one off. All right. So, off to the side with that. Two walkers enter play. Two walkers uh, enter play, and let's see uh, forest number one, forest number two, forest number three, forest number four. Roll the dice. Three. One, two, three. And the second walker. One, two, three. Two walkers comes out of the woods right up there at the camp. That's not good news for Alan in the next turn. All right. Um, melee phase. Threat tracker goes up because there's combat. And let's just start from, uh, from one side. Alan first. He has uh, two white dice. Four. And a headshot. So this walker is dead and gone nice alan uh, next up is uh, jim jim has two red dice he rolls two and the zombie can't roll higher than two because it only has one red die so it's knocked back and not uh, prone Uh, next combat is going to be Rick. Rick has uh, two white dice. Let's see what he gets. He rolls three, but no uh, headshot, so the zombie is not prone. And Shane, Shane has uh, a red and a white dice. He rolls two. He may re-roll the red dice because he's a bruiser. I think he will try to get that headshot gone. Nah, two. So he knocks the walker prone. All right. So that was uh, all the melee combat. Then it's the end phase where we have to check if the walkers get back up. This one right there. No. The one by Rick. Yes. Uh, the one by Jim. No. And Alan killed his walker. Next activation phase. Red Tracker goes up by one because we're playing solo. And let's see what we can do here then. Hmm. <laughs> I think the girls are all going to. Yeah, they're all going to try and uh, lower threat level. Donna first. No. And then she sneaks into combat with this walker right here. Harold, no, she sneaks into combat. And last, we're going to take uh, Laurie. Come on, Laurie. Yes, she lowers the threat level, and then she can sneak into combat. So, because they have no weapons, they better work together in bringing down the walkers right there. And that was their actions. Uh, Rick Grimes. Hmm. Yeah, he's going to use the bandages with one point and uh, then get his health back and with his second point he's going to run past this walker down here and draw in another one there and Shane, Shane is going to run here around the forest up here and draw in this walker right there might as well get them uh, might as well get them close so That's uh, them. Then we have uh, Alan and Jim and Dale. Dale is going to sneak up to the tent, take the next token. Let's see what he finds there. A supplies, a crowbar. Awesome, because he doesn't have a uh, melee weapon. A crowbar. Oh, it does nothing. 
in close combat. Only if he has to smash something. So that's not going to much of a help. Uh, then we have uh, Alan. Alan is going to sneak up to the walker right. Nah, he might as well do a run. He's going to run around the walker, draw it into combat, and then there's Jim. He's still going to sneak into the to combat with the the walker already uh, down. So that's all the guys. Let's just take a close up look at uh, how everything stands. So. Here are the ladies of the group. They ganged up on a walker right there. Alan is getting in to help them. Jim is going to try and stump the walker right there. Over there is Dale with his trash can lid and crowbar. And uh, Rick and Shane are already far down the road, getting close to the, to the group where it uh, matters. But now is the event phase where we have to see if something bad happens. Because a lot of bad stuff happened in my last game, but there uh, Rick was alone. I don't think there's anybody here that's inside the kill zone. So we're just going to draw an event card and see what it says. Feeding Frenzy! All quiet. Roll a black die for each survivor engaged in melee combat against one or more walkers. On a shield, the model loses one health point. Oh. All right. So, let's see how hungry that zombie down there is. Uh, Carol. No, she's not wounded. Uh, Laurie. Nope. Donna. No. <laughs> how lucky is that? Uh, Shane. No. Rick? Yeah, of course, Rick. So, Rick is wounded. Uh, Alan? No. And uh, Jim? No. Well, that was pretty lucky. Six rolls, and only one of the characters got bitten. And uh, the card? Didn't even uh, raise the Red Tracker, so that was really nice. Melee combat, Red Tracker goes up because we have a lot of combat. Okay, let's take the, the women down here first. So, Laurie, Carol, and Donna, she doesn't even have a melee die. No reason to bring her into the combat then. All right, so two red die, Laurie and Carol, they roll... Zero. <laughs> All right, let's see if the walker, what does it do? Zero. Lucky. All right, so they win a draw and the zombie is not prone. But that was more luck than skill for those. Uh, Alan is uh, up next. Uh, two white dice, a hatchet, and brute force. He rolls a two. And a uh, and a headshot, and the zombie can't roll more than two, so it's going to die, dead and gone. Let's see if uh, Jim is able to bash the head of the zombie right there. It can't wound him back, and since it's not prone as long as he wins the combat, the zombie is dead. He stunned it. Uh, let's take. Shane with the baseball bat. Shane rolls a two and the, the walker rolls a one. So it's knocked over prone and knocked back. Next up is Rick. Rick with the two white dice. Let's see. One. Oh my god, he's so bad. Okay. Walker only rolls one, so it's knocked over. And not back. That's all the guys. Let's see if the walkers get up. First walker, right there. No. The one near Rick? Yes. The one near Shane? No. The one near the ladies? No. I think this might be the lucky break. All right, uh, threat tracker goes up. 
because we're playing solo. And who goes first? Let's just... Um, Alan is going to sneak up here. And he's going to take the brute force because the ladies are here. Uh, Peril, she's going to run up here. And the near zombie is going to bump into Alan. She's going to use a second action to try and uh, lower the threat tracker. Nope. Then Jim is going to sneak down here. So Laurie can uh, run up right behind Jim. Going to draw in this walker right there. She's going to use a second action. Yes. Lowering the threat level. And last is uh, Donna. Donna is also going to run up here and draw in the walker right there that's going to bump into Alan. So they are making a shield right there. Let's see. Uh, Shane. Mm. I think Shane is just going to run through the forest up here. Help Jim in that combat. And this walker right here. It could make it. So they are there. And then it's Rick's turn. Perhaps, yeah, Rick is just going to sneak and he's going to use his uh, leader ability to bring down the threat tracker by one. So the events are not going to get too bad in this game right here. Because there are so many characters and they can use the, the keep calm ability all the time to, to keep that threat down. So there's no way I'm going to lose the game uh, by reaching uh, a threat level of 18. So it's just about keeping them alive and playing smart. Event phase. There are no walkers in kill zone areas. So let's draw an event and see what happens. Plus one threat. Rouse lurkers. All quiet. Shuffle any discarded lurker cards back into the supply deck. There are no discarded lurker cards yet. So, lucky me. Off to the side with that one. And then on to melee. Let's take the two zombies over there against Alan. So, Alan has the two white dice. Let's see, come on, Alan. He rolls a three. And first zombie has one dice, second zombie has two red. So let's see, three zombie dice against him, and the zombies, oh no, they're rolling four. So not only is Alan wounded, he's also bitten. I better check out that amputate rule. He might have to, so he's not back, he might have to cut off his own arm. Amputate may be performed as a special action when a bitten friendly model is within the survivor's kill zone. Oh, so he can't do it. All right, Rick has to get close. Target friendly model loses a white die of health. If they survive, flip over the health tracker so they are no longer bitten. In either case, roll a black die. On a shield, the model loses a hand slot of the owning player's choice and anything that was a crick in it. On a blank, the target may not run for the remainder of the game. If the character suffers a second amputation, they are permanently out of the game. Let's chop up an arm. If needed. But first, Jim's combat. He has two red dice. Oh, Jim. One. Against the zombie, who rolls a one. So he wins this one because it's a draw. Knocks the zombie over. Shane with the... Uh, a red and a white, he rolls a one. Oh my god. Zombie rolls zero. Zombie is knocked over. There. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. So the gang is all centered around here. Jim and Alan. Oh, I forgot to use Dale. 
Jim and Alan are trying to protect the ladies. There's a couple of walkers coming in there. There's a whole bunch of walkers over here with Shane, but they're all knocked over. So we see if they get up. And then there's Rick over there sneaking in slowly to help his wife. Let's, um, let's see what happens here. Okay. I better remember Dale this time then. I think Dale is just going to. Uh, he's just going to run over here to the RV. That'll draw in this one right here. Rip. And he'll take the last supply counter there inside the RV. Let's check what he finds. Emergency supplies. Immediately store one health point lost early in the game to the searching model and all friendly models within six inches. Yeah, all right. That's not going to make a difference right there. Popping open that first aid kit. Need to check if Alan loses uh, some health from the bite. That should be done first. No, he doesn't. Uh, zombies, if they get up, this one, it does. Uh, that one right there, it doesn't. That one right there, it doesn't. That one right there, it does. Uh, this one over here, it doesn't. All right. Red Trigger goes up because we're playing solo, and then it would be Dale's turn. All right, how do we do this best? I think. Uh, Alan is going to sneak past this zombie right here, up here, and then um, Carol can make a. No, she can't. She can't. She'll so have to sneak and she'll try to bring down the threat. She does. And the other ladies will sneak in as well. Trying to stay out of there. And they're both going to try and lower the threat tracker. No problem. So it's down on one. Then uh, Jim is just going to stay there. Shane. Shane should be good. So Shane he'll sneak in here in front of the, the group, trying to protect them. And Jim, no, Rick. Is there anyone here for Rick? I think Rick, Rick is just going to run here through the forest up here to take out this walker right there. So next up is the events. This walker right here is going to attack uh, Shane. This walker right here is going to jump on Alan. This one right here is going to jump on Jim. And uh, let's draw an event card and see what happens. Plus one. Thunderstorm. All threat levels. A sudden storm breaks out. Immediately discard all gory clothing. I don't have any of those. While the storm is in effect, survivors cannot shoot at targets more than 8 inches away unless they first roll a shield on the action dice. In the end phase, after rolling for prone walkers, remove one burning token. Yeah, no burning one. Okay, so there's a storm and we can't shoot far away. No matter. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, so, tight little group here. All protecting, Shane fighting a walker, Alan fighting a walker, Jim fighting a walker, uh, Rick fighting a walker, and slowly getting closer to the uh, R we. So let's uh, let's roll some melee combat. Threat tracker goes up by one. Uh, let's start with uh, Shane. Come on, please roll better than you've been doing. Four and a headshot. Kills the walker instantly. No problem. Let's see if uh, Alan fares any better. Two, two white dice. Come on. Three. All right. So he knocks the zombie over, but no headshot. Jim. He rolls a two. So he's going to win no matter what against this one zombie, but no headshot. So it's just going to be bumped over. Rick. Two white dice. Come on, Rick. 
three and a headshot. So this zombie is dead. Let's see if the uh, first, yeah. End phase, Alan is the is the infection spreading? Yes, it is. He loses a wound. I need this game to end before he goes out of combat. Uh, this little walker, does she get up? Yes, she does. This walker. Nope. This walker right there. Nope. And the last one over there. Yes. Rub. Red Dragon goes up. He's down to low threat again. And let's uh, let's see. Shane. Yeah, Red's just trying to keep the threat low. He can do that. And then he sneaks into combat with this walker right there. Rub. Alan. Mm. Alan found some bandages. He's going to use those to restore a single health point, giving him another round to be uh, to be bitten. That's good, keeping him alive. And he's going to uh, yeah, he's going to join Shane in there. And then there is uh, Carol is able to run into the RV, so she's safe. Let's see if Donna can make it. Donna can make it to the RV, so she's safe. And let's just get um, Carol up there as well. She can't quite make it, but let's just see if uh, if they stay alive for the end of the combat uh, until the end of the round, because the goal for this scenario was Let's see. Uh, victory condition. The player wins at the end of the turn in which at least two members of group B are in contact with the RV. So they're inside the RV. They're safe. They can just make it through this turn. We won the scenario without casualties this time. Um, let's see. Event face. Short circuit. No, nothing for that. Let's take another one. There's a storm coming. There is a storm, a thunderstorm. So another storm. There's another storm coming. Uh, low, medium, high threat. The tension reaches fever pitch. Add one to the threat level. Immediately draw two more event cards, applying the results at the same time. Okay. Event number one. That's a prison card. No sirens here. Plus one. Shooting at shadows. All threat levels. All survivors with the nerf value lower than the current threat must shoot at the closest enemy mark if they have a ranged weapon. There's nothing like that. Uh, in addition, each tamer shot is fired. Uh, if and everything has no. Uh, yeah. So. It raises the threat level, but uh, since it's so low, there's nobody is going to get scared. A lot of them have a low or nerve, but uh, but we've been able to keep it down. Plus one again. The hunger. Each player moves one eligible walker towards the nearest survivor. So let's just see what is the nearest walker. That must be over here. And towards so it can't it can't really make it. And then we move into combat. Threat tracker goes up to eight. So Shane has two uh, white dice and uh, Alan has two white dice. It shouldn't be any problem bringing down that last zombie. There was a headshot for success, and that brings it down. Original. So it, the game ends on medium threat with all the. With all the the supplies taken, the camp is safe. The crew is getting into the RV. I don't think it'll be any problem for these heroes to uh, take out the last couple of stragglers. None died this time around, and the 
The replies are going to come handy in the next scenario. Thanks for watching. This was the third game in the Days Gone By expansion for uh, Walking Dead All Out War. I'm really looking forward to playing the fourth scenario, which is going to be with Rick and Glim going into Atlanta, uh, covered in gory clothing. I better reshuffle all those uh, thunderstorms into the deck just to add to the tension. No dead. Lots of supplies for the next scenario. This was an uh, this was a fairly easy one. I think it makes a huge difference that you have so many characters able to keep that threat level down all the time. Sneak, they won't make noise. Second action, try to uh, keep the threat level down. So the event cards really didn't become that uh, that dangerous because some of the events that bring walkers to the tables did become relevant in uh, this one. No shooting, no mayhem. So yeah, this was uh, this was fairly straightforward and simple, but a nice game, a nice setup. If you enjoyed these videos, please consider liking and subscribing and dropping all the shebangs and some of my social media uh, links will be uh, posted below. Thanks for watching. Until uh, next time, keep rolling some dice and stay happy.